So I'm making ice cream sandwiches. It's a lemon sugar cookie with vanilla ice cream and lemon curd. And then we're gonna roll it in the sprinkles to make it even prettier. And I didn't wanna do any old plain ice cream sandwich because I think that the menu is gonna be, it's gonna reflect on TC's personality. Bright, fun, lovable, and it'd be an ice cream sandwich. Isn't that cool? So instead of just trying to make a perfect circle for the ice cream sandwich, it is much easier to take a sheet pan like this and add vanilla ice cream. You smooth it on out, you freeze it. Once it comes out of the freezer, I'm gonna use a cookie cutter to make little circles so I can have perfect circles for the ice cream sandwich. Pop this in the freezer and keep it in there until it's frozen and extra firm because we need to work with it. Grab my stuff for my cookies. Got some flour, baking soda, baking powder. I'm making a simple sugar cookie recipe, but I'm gonna add that lemon flavor. I'm using three cups of all-purpose flour, adding a half a teaspoon of cornstarch to this. The cornstarch helps the cookie like get super soft. Three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. That's that leavener. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. And a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Whisk that on up. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side. Now for the wet. I'm using two sticks of unsalted butter, one and a half cups granulated sugar. Cream this together until it gets light, airy, and fluffy. I'm gonna add one egg. All right, that's good. Two teaspoons of lemon zest. It's definitely gonna be lemony, so I'm <laughs> gonna give you that little pop. Right. I'm also gonna use the juice of this lemon, which is like about a tablespoon. And I'm gonna also use a teaspoon of lemon extract. Sometimes the lemon flavor can bake off. Lemon extract will ensure you're gonna taste lemon flavor in these cookies. So that looks good. A little bit of my dry mixture at a time. All right, that's good. I'm gonna add the rest Looks perfect. Let me grab my baking sheets. I've lined them with parchment paper, and I'm using a cookie scooper to make sure that I get even cookies. So I've got some coarse sugar here. I'm gonna roll each ball into the sugar. The sugar cookie. Look how pretty that's gonna be when it comes out. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna use this glass to flatten it out. Want to make sure your cookie doesn't dome. Dome basically means pop up. I'm gonna bake these at 350 for about 15 to 18 minutes. One on the top, one on the bottom. So my ice cream is nice and firm now. I'm gonna use a cookie cutter to cut out perfect circles. This is why it's important to make sure your ice cream is nice and frozen so you'll be able to do this and get it out. Let me grab my cookies. I'm taking one of my sugar cookies, put it on like that, get the lemon curd, and just sandwich that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Don't skimp on the curd. I picked yellow sprinkles because, I mean, it is a lemon ice cream sandwich. I'm making s'mores ice cream pie. It's basically all the flavors of your dearest campfire confection in a frosty pie. I'll start with a basic graham cracker crust. I've got one stick of butter that I'll melt in my saucepan. I'll brown this butter, which will lend some toasty flavor that will help contribute to the illusion that we're gonna be eating this pie near a campfire. I'll heat it gently until it starts to sizzle and pop. That's the milk solids browning. And then once the sizzling and the popping sounds stop and the butter goes silent, that's how you know it's done. While this goes, I'll blend up my graham crackers. I'll sprinkle in a pinch of salt, because it'll taste good. And then process into crumbs. And now with this running, I'll drizzle in the butter. You can see and smell those toasty buttery bits. Okay, it's starting to clump together. Just eat this straight. This is the nine inch pie plate here. I'll dump this in and pack it down firmly and evenly all over the bottom and up the sides. Crust is looking thick and tasty.
Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna line this crust with fudge. And then very carefully, so that the fudge doesn't pull up the crumbs from the crust, I'll spread it all over the bottom and up the sides, and it'll be this great chewy chocolatey layer between the crust and the ice cream. Why eat ice cream out of a bowl when you could eat it out of a tray of graham cracker crust and fudge? You know what I'm saying? I'll stick this in the freezer to firm up while I make my no-churn ice cream filling. This is the easiest way to make ice cream. You essentially just beat up heavy cream and sweetened condensed milk and then add in your mix-ins. The secret is all of the ingredients have got to stay cold. I even chilled my mixer bowl. So I have heavy cream right in here that I'm going to beat to stiff peaks. I'll get my sweetened condensed milk and marshmallow fluff. And these have been chilling so that the ice cream can maintain its stiff texture. This is looking good. I'll quickly scrape in my sweetened condensed milk and marshmallow fluff, of course, since it's a s'more. It's so good. And a teaspoon of vanilla and a pinch of salt. And now I don't want to deflate this, so I'll quickly beat this in until it's just incorporated. That's it. I'm done. I don't want to overmix it and risk it deflating. So. I'm gonna, quick as a bunny, hurry scurry, get my frozen pie crust. Pile this into the center. Oh, look at that. Look at that fluff. You know what this is begging for? Just some swoops with a spoon to get really pretty texture. I'm working quickly. I don't want it to melt. Ice cream really makes you earn it. <laughs> okay, back in the freezer she goes. While the pie stays chilly, I'll char its topping. I've got my marshmallows, my fire. Here I go. This is so satisfying. If you don't have fun of these, you can use a broiler. Ha <gasps> ha! I'm lighting some stuff on fire. Getting some great color onto the marshmallows. Who needs a campfire? Okay, I'll plop these on. It's gonna be great and make it pretty with some super normal waxy milk chocolate. It's everything I've always wanted. Salted caramel sundaes are like these layers of deliciousness. First there's a puddle of chocolate sauce, then there's salted caramel ice cream, then there's homemade caramel popcorn, and as if that's not enough, there's a big dollop of whipped cream on the top. I'm gonna start with homemade caramel popcorn. Okay, this is what I've got. I've got salted roasted peanuts, one cup, and what I've done is roast them again, 350 degrees for just seven minutes, just to bring out all that peanut flavor. Okay, next, popcorn. I've got four cups of popcorn. I'm just gonna toss these together. And next, I'm gonna make homemade caramel sauce. I know it sounds scary, but it's really quite easy. So first, what I'm gonna start with is one and a half cups of sugar. and a quarter of a cup of water. I'm just gonna stir it just until the sugar is wet. Now I'm gonna cook the caramel. I'll stir it until the sugar dissolves, then swirl it occasionally. If it looks like it's crystallizing, don't worry. In just a few minutes, it will turn clear golden brown. Okay, the caramel's done. It's a gorgeous color, really sort of warm brown color. And so now I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna put in one tablespoon of corn syrup. and two teaspoons of good vanilla. One teaspoon and a second one. Okay, and then just swirl it. Be careful, this is really hot. And now I'm gonna put the popcorn and the peanuts in, just like that. You wanna work really quickly, you don't want the caramel to harden. I'm gonna put some salt in, since it's salted caramel. Two teaspoons of salt. One. So you pour the whole thing on the sheet pan, including caramel in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so you don't want a big mound of this in the middle. You want little clumps of it. So take two forks and just pull them apart. 
And the last thing is one teaspoon of fleur de sel. It's kind of like a briny salt. And there's something so wonderful about that sweet and salty thing. Not too sweet, not too salty. Okay, I'm just gonna let this cool and it'll harden. In the meantime, I'm gonna make whipped cream for the Sundays. Because of course you have to have whipped cream on a Sunday, right? So I have one cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. This is as easy as it gets. And I'm just gonna whip this until it forms soft peaks. So this is the chocolate sauce for my salted caramel sundaes. And I'm starting with eight ounces of bittersweet chocolate. So I'm gonna take a cup of heavy cream and put it in a bowl set over a pan of simmering water. Don't want the water to touch the bottom of the bowl or the chocolate could burn. And make sure the water is simmering, not boiling crazy. Eight ounces of chocolate, right in. Next is two teaspoons of corn syrup. I only use light corn syrup here. One teaspoon of coffee granules, instant coffee granules, or espresso, whatever you have. Are you ready for a serious sundae? I'll show you how I assemble this. So first the chocolate sauce, big puddle in the bottom. Okay. Then I've got a small scoop, and I'm gonna do three small scoops of salted caramel ice cream. You can find all different kinds of brands in the store. Just pick your favorite. Three scoops. Caramel popcorn, homemade, right on top. Just break it up. Try not to eat it all <laughs> before it goes into the sundae. And a big dollop of whipped cream on top. Now, all I need is a big spoon and a big smile. I'm gonna grill up some biscuits. I'm gonna grill some peaches <laughs> and make a uh, like a parfait, like a like a sundae. We need sugar too for our compote, just a little bit. And then I saw these. Oh, nice! Look at that! Yeah. It's like okay. I'm gonna squeeze together, Jeff. Lemon going in here. So lemon to the blueberries. You gonna put a little sugar in there too? I gotta get those seeds out. See, now I feel for these chefs. It's a compote, it's rustic. There's seeds once in a while, right? It's not He's fun. working fast. Totally. You know, I never gave him a time limit, but we are towards Quick the end little, of the show. I just want these to keep some of their vibrance, but also uh, break down a little bit, almost like uh, just a quick compote. Quick. What about your yeah, grilled yeah, yeah. item there? You better get going, Jeff. All right, all right. Stop being so mean to me. We're enjoying this a little too much. This is we? really great. Right. Anybody right. got any popcorn? Careful, don't cut yourself, Jeff. No, this is when you cut yourself. Very careful when you got the knife out. Oh, beautiful summer peach here. I'm just gonna hit it with a little, Oh, just that's... a little olive oil to get it going. Watch oh, it, good. boom. Oh, kissing peaches. Oh. How much time has left, there? Katie? Like 40 seconds or something? 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, I believe I have a half hour per the instructions and the rules no. of You get nothing. Crash. No, no. Jeff, I feel like I'm starting to see a little bit of your wife Sarah's family influence here. You got biscuits, peaches. Yeah. It's a little southern. They're, they hail from Kentucky. Exactly. So I got, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm southern biscuit aficionado by proxy. Yeah, like you're say. southern adjacent. Pinch of salt. Mm. All right, Jeff, which one of our houses would you want to crash? Oh, it's obvious. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> not just because he said that, and I know he's shooting lasers with his eyes at me right now, but it would probably have to be Alex's. Ah! <laughs> My house is like a restaurant. It is. Look at that. That's all I wanted. Some nice smoky char on there. And we're going to crumble these guys up so it's easier to spoon. Look at that. My peaches, oh yeah, baby. Look at, look at that, Jeffers. Man, you love when I am just slaying it. And that's what I'm doing right now because I'm, you know, the kitchen crash king now. Kitchen crash king. This is kind of like a shortcake sundae. It is, okay. Boom, bloobs, peach, bisque, scream. TikTok. We got it all. Whew. Let's build. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to crumble some biscuits. 15 seconds on the clock. Oh, come on, stop it, Katie. Enough of that. We're all friends here. Just a little bit on the bottom. So you get some of that smoky summertime cookout oh, jar yeah. we're looking for in all our dishes today. <laughs> <laughs> Warm, I would just 
<laughs> Just a little bit. Look at how quick I did that R T C guys, real time compo. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> real time compo. And of course, those peaches that I'm gonna actually slice very thin. Who doesn't love peaches in the summertime? The best. Especially with blueberries. Yeah. And you said that's maple ice cream, right? That is maple ice cream, what Katie. What a good combo. Yeah, don't be stingy with that ice cream. I feel very nervous. I'm shaking, guys. Can you Katie tell? Katie is a tough judge. Man, I like really this good. commentary. <laughs> now another layer of the RTC. Real-time compote. Don't forget that whipped cream. Oh, yeah. Just au naturel. How oh. about that? It's the best. Ah. Naturel. It's the best. But we are not done yet. I want a, my vertical upcycle garden. <laughs> Beautiful upcycled mint as a garnish that I planted a couple weeks ago. The gift that And then I giving. saw this. Don't kill me now. Just to make it a showstopper here. And that is a sparkler <laughs> kitchen crack. Happy birthday. It's like being in the club, right? Wow. I'm nervous. It's like a bottle of vodka, but it's not. It's even better. I yep, love it's that. It's really beautiful. Really pretty. Look at you. So fancy. Hey, All right, I'm going to dig in here all the way think? to the bottom. It was Get all fun all and games, so Jeff burned the kitchen down. Hey, at least we went out with a bang. Mm. You know what's really good? The maple with the blueberries, kind of, it kind of wakes up the summer fruit. Oh. And I like the cream on top. I'm making a frozen tiramisu cake. I've just been grating some bittersweet chocolate, and I'm gonna grind up some espresso beans. I'll just grind them until they're really, really fine. So I'm adding the ground up espresso beans to the chocolate, and I'll just give that a stir. A store-bought frozen pound cake. So I'm gonna cut this into four slices I'll put the first slice into a loaf pan lined with overhanging plastic wrap. Drizzle over two tablespoons of coffee liqueur. Spoon on two cups of slightly softened coffee ice cream and spread it out evenly. Then I'll sprinkle over two tablespoons of the chocolate espresso bean mixture. Then put the next layer of cake on top and repeat the layers. Coffee liqueur, chocolate ice cream this time. Spread it out evenly again grated chocolate and espresso beans, cake, liqueur, more coffee ice cream, chocolate and espresso beans, and the last layer of cake. If you get a little tear here and there, it doesn't matter. On the final layer of cake, I'm gonna drizzle a final bit of liqueur. Now for the top layer of ice cream, I'm gonna go with vanilla, so it'll kind of look like a little layer of whipped cream on top. I wanna get it kind of evened out, of course, I have to do a top layer of the chocolate espresso bean mixture. Okay, now I'm gonna pop this into the freezer. And let me give you the heads up on how to serve it. Lift it out using the plastic wrap, peel the wrap off, then simply slice it up, as thin or as thick as you want. Tiramisu in frozen ice cake form. Who's gonna say no to that? I love when you can take a few great ingredients from the store and make something really amazing for dessert, which is exactly what I'm gonna do with my peanut butter and fudge ice cream sandwiches. It's kind of an American classic with the volume turned up. So I've got peanut butter and fudge ice cream. It's a good place to start. Warm it up slightly in the microwave for about 15 seconds, just to soften it enough so it's pliable. And I've gotten really good peanut butter cookies at a bakery. And I'm gonna make six peanut butter and fudge ice cream sandwiches. I mean, how American is that? Oh, ice cream's ready. Do it slowly and do it a little bit at a time. Don't just put it in there for a minute and you'll end up with soup. Yep, perfect, that did it. So I'm taking one scoop of ice cream, putting it on each cookie, I mean, doesn't get any easier than this, right? We had a terrible day at the office testing which kind of ice cream sandwiches we liked better. We had chocolate chip cookies. We had all kinds of ice cream that we put Armagnac in, but this one, hands down. Okay, that's the ice cream. And I'm just gonna take a cookie and put it right on top and just squish it a little bit so that it goes to the edges. Oops, without breaking the cookie. 
That's why you need the ice cream a little bit softened, but not melted. Okay, and because too much is never enough in my world, I'm gonna add some toasted peanuts to the edge. So what I did was I toasted peanuts, I let them cool, I added some salt to it, and now I'm gonna just blitz them in the food processor so that they're kind of really finely chopped. I just wanna be sure they're cool so they don't melt the ice cream. And just pulse it. Okay, that's it, great. I mean, this is the fastest dessert ever, right? And I'm just gonna take each ice cream sandwich and just roll the sides in the salted peanuts. How good does that look? Okay, that's one, now I'm just gonna do the rest. Okay, now I'm gonna put the whole thing in the freezer for about an hour and let them harden, and they're gonna be so good. We're taking an iconic dessert, the banana split, mm -hmm. kind of nanner colored right now, yep. and turning it into a fiery and frozen ice cream pie. We're working together. Teamwork. To pass the grilled banana split pie. Yes. Katie, you're first. I'm first, all right. Every pie's gotta start out with what? The crust. The crust. All right, so instead of the usual graham crackers, since we're doing ice cream, I'm using waffle oh. cones. Crush them up. I'm gonna add some salted butter, melted uh -huh. salted butter. Uh -huh. if, if you don't have any salted butter, you can do, use unsalted and add a pinch. It just helps balance out all the sweetness right into so a pie dish. Mm -hmm. Hello. And then, shocked. what I like to do when I'm making any kind of crumb crust is use the back of a metal measuring cup to just press it all down. I got one down here. So the hot fudge <gasps> goes right in, and I'm just gonna spread it out so we have a nice layer between our ice cream and our pie crust. Next What's element. next? What is next? The grilled banana. So we're gonna give a nice smoke flavor to this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the edges off and we're just gonna cut it this way. On the equator, is there equator? Yeah, the totally, have equator? yeah. I was thinking of Like that, and we're gonna rub, and we're gonna brush this with a little whole butter that's melted. Mm -hmm. All right? And don't, just be generous because as you can see, we're having a sundae, it doesn't really matter. So fantastic, some brown sugar. Ooh. Onto a very hot grill. Wow, listen to that sizzle. We have some here that I've done, and that's what it looks like. Can you see that? Have look at it. We're gonna take the peel off. That's a snack. And I'm just gonna kind of press it down so that it sticks into the fudge. I'm just gonna go in. This is the Neapolitan, so I'm going in. Uh, going on all the way across. So I'm getting all the flavors at once, no big deal. But you see beforehand, already got each of the individual flavors out. You're gonna go around the edges there. And then, is there a spatula? Or maybe I can use my little offset. Never mind, I got this. Then I'm just gonna we're go cool, in cool. and start placing. Mm. This is a quick work. It's gonna put this right back into oh, this is cute. the freezer. Go around, thanks, GZ. Go around the edge here. Just come in with a little bit of whipped cream. Oh. Center. Oh, yes. It's happy, but now it's my turn to take this pie over the top, of course, with some chocolate sauce that we're gonna drizzle. Now, that's gonna take about three to six hours to like really firm up, especially with the whipped cream. So don't check it. Also. Now, this is not even chocolate sauce, this is hot fudge. Yeah, we just kind of warmed up a little bit. Do it, Jeff. Ooh, Concentric sorry. circles, uh, Jeff, do it. Going in reverse. Oh, and of course, the maraschino cherries and those candied walnuts. Look how glistening and pretty those are. And we're just going to kind of do a I little I like that we're getting a hot fudge on the forth. bottom and the top. And then some sprinkles around the perimeter. And of course, last but not least, cherry on a top. cherry on top. Uh, OK, oh. beautiful. Oh. But this is just like a really cool ice cream cone in a pie form. This is. Perfection for summertime. And that bottom crust, mm -hmm. that waffle cone crust, you gotta try this. I'm making my cookie butter coffee cones, which are big mounds of ice cream drenched in melted chocolate and rolled in crunchy speculoos cookies. I can't wait to eat these. To start, I'm gonna melt my chocolate. I've got some semi-sweet chocolate chips here, and I'm gonna melt them in a double boiler, which is just a heat-safe bowl sitting over a pot of simmering water. And I'm doing this so that it doesn't overheat and seize up. So I want two cups of chocolate, 
And I'm also gonna melt it with a quarter cup of coconut oil, which is gonna give it a nicer, smoother texture. And I'm using refined here because I don't want the coconutty flavor, but if you do want the coconutty flavor, use unrefined. And I'll stir this until it's smooth and melted. This chocolate is smooth and glossy and melted. I'll get it off of the heat. I've got my sugar cones and my pretty little holsters that I made with some glasses and some of my spare sprinkles that were lying around. But you could also use rice or dried beans or just a sturdy glass. And these will help the cones stay upright while I'm assembling. And it's a pretty serving presentation, if I do say so myself. The best bite at the end of a sundae cone is when you get to the bottom and you're kind of sad that you're almost done with it, but then you realize that it's filled with chocolate. So that is an important part of this recipe. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of chocolate to the bottom of each of these cones. And I just love the way that chocolate firms up and it's snappy chocolate covered in that crunchy cone. This is definitely one of the more delightful bites in this world. Okay, so then the rest of this chocolate is gonna be used to dunk the cones once I've got the ice cream on. Before adding ice cream, I'm gonna spread the inside of the cone with cookie butter, which is this delightful cinnamony spread inspired by those speculoos cookies that you get on airplanes. And I also tend to get coffee on airplanes. So that's where the flavor combination came from of the coffee ice cream with this bread. Here I go. I'm just gonna use my small offset spatula and add a thick layer of spread all around the inside of the cone. This is so satisfying and fun. It is taking all of my power not to eat this cookie butter right now. But it's gonna be so good with the ice cream. I've got my coffee ice cream, which I've softened in the fridge to make it easier to work with. And I'll just use my offset spatula to fill up these little guys. Okay. So I have the ice cream almost filled to the top, and now I'm gonna add another layer of cookie butter. And now I'm gonna add one big round scoop on top. Just like that. And now I'll continue filling these, and then I'll stick them in the freezer to firm up. These are good and frozen, and my chocolate is still melty, but it's not hot. I don't want it to be hot and melt my ice cream. So I'll grab a cone, and I'll dunk it in chocolate. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. And then before it hardens, I'm going to get it into the cookies. I smashed up some store-bought Speculoos cookies for a cinnamony crunch. Just like that. And now I'll do the same thing with my sprinkles. So I'll roll it in the chocolate and I wanna to totally cover the ice cream and part of the cone. I'll let the excess drip off, and then I'll roll it in sprinkles. How could you not be so happy looking at this? And I'll just finish these off with cookies and sprinkles. Okay. They're dressed in their costumes and ready for their warm up into my mouth. Mmm, that snappy chocolate shell and those crisp cinnamon cookies are a perfect pair. 10 out of 10. I'm making these incredible raspberry baked Alaska starts with pound cake on the bottom and ice cream and sorbet in the middle and then it's covered with meringue, and they're real showstoppers. What I have is six slices of pound cake. They're about a half an inch thick. I mean, you can make your own pound cake, but why would you? And I'm gonna take a two and a half inch cutter, and I'm gonna cut around out of each slice of pound cake. Just discard the edges. Okay, next is the ice cream. So I want a round scoop that's half raspberry sorbet and half vanilla ice cream. So I do half a scoop with vanilla, and then I just fill the rest of it with raspberry sorbet. I mean, how we see that. I love raspberries and cream, so this is a good combination. See, the scoop and the cake are just the same diameter, so it makes it look really nice. Hey, that's one. Doesn't that look great? I'm gonna do five more and put them on a sheet pan. Okay, that's all six. Doesn't that look great? 
So I'm just going to freeze them for 30 minutes, just until they get nice and hard. And in the meantime, I'm going to make Swiss meringue to put on the outside. It's so dramatic. There are two steps to the Swiss meringue. First, I'll heat eight extra large egg whites in a heat-proof bowl set over a pan of simmering water. Add one and a half cups of sugar and whisk the mixture almost constantly until the sugar is dissolved and it reads 120 degrees on a candy thermometer. Then for step two, I'll pour the mixture into the bowl of an electric mixer fitted with a whisk attachment. Add two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, half a teaspoon of salt, and beat it on medium speed for one minute. Then I'll turn up the speed and whisk it on high for five minutes until the egg whites form stiff, glossy peaks. So you take meringue and you put it on the outside. And I, this is my technique. I just take a little offset spatula just like this and just cover the entire thing with meringue. Just keep adding meringue. Make sure it's completely covered. Because remember, I'm going to bake this. OK, so you want big peaks, just like that, because that's what's going to kind of brown when you put them in the oven. So now I'm going to bake these really hot temperature, 500 degrees, for two and a half to three minutes. You want to watch them really carefully. And in the meantime, I'm going to get the sauce for the baked Alaskas. So this is my fresh raspberry sauce. And the best part is, one of the key ingredients is store-bought. It's really straightforward to make. I put six ounces of fresh raspberries in a saucepan over medium heat, added half a cup of sugar, quarter of a cup of water, brought it to a boil, lowered the heat, and simmered it for four minutes. Next, I poured the cooked raspberries into a food processor, added a cup of store-bought seedless raspberry jam, tablespoon of raspberry liqueur, and processed it until it was smooth. Then I poured it into a container and put the lid on. So the jam adds so much flavor to this and texture. It's great. OK, baked Alaska should be done. Whoa, how gorgeous are these? Woo! And a baked Alaska right on the top. Now, how gorgeous does that look? I mean, it's really restaurant food at home, but with store-bought ingredients, it's really easy. I started with a frozen store-bought pound cake, and I cut it into three slices. I put one slice into a loaf pan that had been lined with plastic wrap, then I covered that slice with a cup of vanilla ice cream. I sprinkled on chopped peanut butter cups, then put on a second slice of pound cake. The next layer of ice cream was chocolate, Todd's favorite. On top of that, I sprinkled some chopped chocolate candies. Then the final layer of cake goes on top, followed by a cup of chocolate chip ice cream. And for the topping, I squeezed chocolate sauce all over the top. This is the kind that hardens as soon as it hits the ice cream. Then I sprinkled on the two candies. I let it set for a few seconds and then I loosely folded the plastic wrap over the cake. Then I put it into the freezer to harden, and I made a whole other cake. This cake is so simple to make, and I'll tell you how to serve it up. So you take the cake out of the freezer, lift it carefully out of the pan, peel back the plastic wrap, and voila, ice cream cake. Look at all those layers of deliciousness.